You know what, Anne? I don't know what I could have done without you. That's a popular number straight out of the book. Come on, man. Nah. There are no copyright laws to mere expressions now, are they? Isn't someone misplacing priorities here? Hello, Eve. Good afternoon, Mr. Daniel. Mr. Daniel? What is it with his official number jumbo? Chris, can't you see that Eve is upset? Over what? I kept her waiting. Who had an appointment with that dietitian? Dietitian? You know, the usual woman thing. Ah, I see. Um, <clears throat> Right now? Yes, right now. Later. Later. I'm forgetting the vows. But your behavior suggests that you are. Eve, I did not make the vow to break it, alright? So please quit acting like a goddamn boy. This prospective client, Mega Box, ready to spend. Mm. That's nice. Kind of news that suits my ears, so I'll tweet it. Who you is can, he? You can say that again. So who is he? She. Mm, she. Sure. Wow. So tell me about her. Mrs. Vera Daniels. You know her, don't you? Oh, of course. I mean, <laughs> She's a very famous woman, you know, so... So, um, what does she want specifically? Her son's wedding. She's getting married. You know the son? Mm, yeah, I've seen him on one or two occasions. 
Well, you have another opportunity to make it another occasion when you visit them this evening. Um, this evening, um, actually, Robert, I am, I am. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick this one. You know. So why don't we just send them um, Tonya? Oh, you want me to entrust a chance for Mega Box on Tonya? Come on, you, you've jumped at opportunities like this one before. Why pass this one by? I mean, come on. <laughs> Robert, look, I am up to my nose with engagement. But you see, Tonya, I mean, she comes with her chance just that you haven't noticed her. I don't want Tony on this. Okay? Besides, the woman specifically asked for you. For me? <laughs> Robert, please, come on. How can she ask of me? I mean, this woman doesn't even know me. How can she simply ask for me? She says she wants the one that organized the governor's daughter's wedding. I mean, no one has beaten that. <laughs> Robert, you really have to try another one. Please, Nightingale Social Services organized the governor's daughter's wedding, not Sandra, for heaven's sake. The lady said she wants the lady in red. And I know none of my members of staff was spotting a red outfit. Except, of course, our delectable and indefatigable Sandra, okay. I'm so sorry, but I'm not going to be able to pick up this one. I can't. You have to. You have to. Okay? You have to pick this one. I've been told that the woman believes she can offer more than the first lady. Why don't we give her the opportunity to do so? Come on. It's mega box. You gain. We gain. to wear the same outfit. <laughs> Come on. When I bring back the memories. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We'll see. Thank you. Right. As I mentioned on the phone, my son is getting married. Okay. What do you have to offer? Uh, at Nightingale Societal Services, we offer everything from ribbons to the last meal. Anything. Good. I was at the uh, governor's daughter's wedding. <laughs> and I think you did a fine job. The cake, everything, I liked it. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Now, I want everything at that wedding. But doubled. Doubled? Mm. Everything? <laughs> Ma, we're talking about the governor here. Who was probably spending state funds? Young lady, when Vera Daniels signifies interest, someone had better to the line. I'm so sorry. You should say. The governor does his wedding um, cost us about 10 million naira. Now, this was the contractual fund, upfront, everything. If you want us to double everything, then that's going to cost you 20 million naira. Young lady, by the way, what's your name? Sandra. Sandra, okay. Sandra. Now, Chris is my only son. In fact, he is my only child. Now, what other opportunity do I have to be mother at a wedding? I guess not. Exactly. Anyway, what is 20 million against having the opportunity to relegating the governor's wife to second lady status? Okay, so I guess um, that this is a deal. Where would you like your check? Immediately, so we could um, commence work right away. Right, there you are. Now, don't uh, underestimate me, young lady. Anyone who works for me earns every single penny. 
I don't know my name. You wouldn't need to worry, Mrs. Daniels. I'm sure everything will be taken care of appropriately. Oh, talk of the devil. Hello, And who's this angel? Ah, this is Sandra Oke. Uh, she's from Nightingale Societal Services. I have contracted the company to take care of your wedding. Yeah. Mm. Very well then. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Okay. Miss Okay, actually. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Oh, pardon me. I never knew an angel like yourself would still be single at your age, you know. Chris! I know, I just apologize to the lady. Oh, Miss Okay, need I offer more? No, it's okay, actually. I was already on my way out. Thank you very much for this. I'll be giving you the day out. Thank you. I'll just see her off, Mom. Okay, Sandra. <laughs> Miss Okay, don't I know you before? Haven't we met somewhere? No, I don't think so. Um, we in our words hardly meet, Mr. Daniels. But we are here now. <laughs> Mr. Daniels, um, special circumstances. That's it. Yeah, it's your face. It's this very strong familiarity. You definitely are placing me somewhere where I do not belong. Did you ever study abroad? I mean, in the United Kingdom? <laughs> definitely not. I mean, never had the privilege. No, certainly not. I just, I just got home myself. I'd like you to meet um, Miss Sandra, okay? She's our C and C for the wedding. And I guess it's your bride, right? Exactly. Just to meet you, sir. C and C. Yeah, contracted to do the fabrics and take care of the guests. Oh. All right. Interesting. Certainly. I need to get along right now. I'll see you guys around some other time. <laughs> yeah. She look at her like that. What's going on? Why is it that each time Eve always takes priority in all of our conversation? Because Eve is the only best friend I've ever had, and I intend to keep it that way. You certainly have a way of keeping things. Actually, Mrs. Vera Daniels, 
already had her mind made up. This woman has an obsession for wanting to topple anything that First Lady has ever done. Told you. Yes, you're definitely right. She just asked me for how much we used to organize the First Lady's daughter's wedding. Look, the First Lady's daughter's wedding costs only 10 million naira. I haven't finished. She said she wanted it doubled. Can you beat that? Doubled! What an obsession. <laughs> the only um, problem is that she didn't let me out of her office without sounding it very clear to me. That we're going to end every time of that money. <laughs> and Robert, trust me, looking into that woman's mean, hard face, I knew that she meant every word of what she said. So, There's no problem. No There's no problem. You just tell her not to worry, okay? <laughs> For a 20 million naira upfront, hey baby, there are things I could do that even a big will be ashamed of. <laughs> Ruben, of course I know. Um, the only thing now is, um, you know, thank God we've already gotten that into our kitty. I mean, we've already got that count. Um, uh, you know, I still am not um, keen on this um, project, you know. I have my reservations, really. Reservations? Yeah, you know, um, this, um, this Chris Daniels guy. What about Chris Daniels? There's just something about that guy that smells trouble. Can you believe that from the last time I met him, he keeps insisting that he's met me somewhere? Do you know? Oh, no, is that what's bothering you? Any guy could say anything to a beautiful lady, just to ensnare the lady. You know, you know all those first time talk, you know, stories. Come on, these are the line of duty. I mean, how much more when the babe is as beautiful as our own Sandra, okay? Um, whatever, it's just that um, I really appreciate it if, you know, I could have as little contact as possible with this guy uh, within the duration of our, our contract, you know, since I can't. Uh... It's okay. See, you just do what you have to do. Okay? Remember, I've worked so hard for that Abuja office. We have a target, all right? And the director has assured me that much. Okay? Let's keep the clock ticking. Do it for me, baby. Okay? I know, we're going to get our target. Don't worry. Please, honey, please. 
You have to help me. Take her with you, please. Well, Ego, you know, I understand the felicity of what you have just told me right now. Uh, and I don't want to sound um, insensitive whatsoever, but... Ego, this girl is not going to be catered for if she comes to me. I mean, and if the reason why you want to take her from your place to my place is because of influences from Kane and the computers and everything, then it's only going to get worse because I'm not going to have time for her and then she's going to have to still sit down in front of the computer all day. You have to do this for me. At least if Christy comes to stay with you, it will make you more responsible. It will make you get a man and start thinking of raising a family. All you do is organize other people's wedding. Have you ever thought about yours? Hey? Ego, um, you know, I don't expect you to understand right now because it's very obvious you don't understand, but I can't, uh... Sandra, there is no way I can understand. I don't want to understand. For how long will I carry this cross all alone? For how long? I'm sorry. Sandra, please take her with you. Do this for me. Do it for me, Sandra. How long is this going to last? Spend the rest of your vacation with me. Mommy, I, I don't want to go. Oh, sweetheart. You really need this change of environment. And um, I'm actually going to buy you um, yeah, computer games on our way home. Yeah. Promise? Promise, of course. Just tell me the name of the computer you want. Oh. Sweetheart, Auntie Sandra knows promise is a bit. She'll show me buy everything for you. Hmm? So hurry, Christine, hurry please, um, I have an appointment to catch. Wow. At least you should have given me water when I came in. <laughs> you got me scared, you know, I was driving like... Um, no, I guess I'll just uh, be on my way since... Um, <laughs> It's very obvious your son is not going to show up. You really don't need him for anything, except his measurements. On the contrary, I do. But um, it's okay, you sent her. Sandra, when it comes to things like weddings, men are surprisingly useless. What you do is put them in the appropriate suit and point them in the direction of the church. <laughs> I guess that sums it all up, but... Um, you know, there won't be any wedding without them anyway, so... Oh, certainly we can't do without them. But in this case, I suppose your, your son thinks less of his wedding because if not, I mean, he should have called or something, oh, you know? Oh, that's not true. I know what you're thinking. You think Chris is a spoiled brat. But his father was really strict with him. His father? Mm. Where is he? He's dead. He died uh, five years ago in that... A disaster. Oh. God rest his soul. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's all right. But he was really strict with Chris. My son comes tops in everything. Uh, uh, academics, sports, indoor, outdoor, and business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess his father's whips, but that was some positive strings after all. Well, if you look at it from that angle, maybe. Is there any other angle or something? Oh, naturally. The combination of Chris and his father was a recipe for disaster. Disaster? When he was in his uh, second year on campus, he had this awful relationship with the most unsuitable girl. 
Happens all the time. She got pregnant. <laughs> and this pauper was trying to trap my son until I came along. What did you do? Well, there's no need going into the details. I just aborted everything, including the pregnancy. You did? Well, <laughs> and I would do exactly the same thing again if my son is going on the wrong track. And look, how can a boy of 20 be getting married to a girl of 16 and a pauper, for, for, for that matter, from the ghetto? I mean, she would have plunged my son into slavery. Slavery? How? Oh yeah. Uh, Sandra, if anything goes wrong with my son's wedding, you'll never forget me for the rest of your life. <laughs> Nothing's going to go wrong for the wedding, trust me. Thank you. That's music to my ears. Well, but that is of course if your son helps me out here, you know, by coming in good time for all our appointments. Definitely nothing will go wrong. Except, uh... Except what? Your natural causes, you know, like the act of God. I never worry about acts of God. But they're there all the time, you know? Yes, but they're not disastrous. I'd worry more about the acts of the devil. Really? What over? That poor girl. The poor girl, you mean the one that got pregnant for you soon? I am a mother. I uh, just hope that everything turned out all right for her. <laughs> poor thing. Well, I guess I, I don't have a choice here. It's quite late now. I'll just be on my way. Yeah, so how is it coming? Fine, except for some um, setbacks. Setbacks? Yeah. Mr. Daniels and his bride have absolutely no regard for time. Can you believe that this couple always show up like five hours behind every scheduled appointment? Can you just beat that? Is that so? <laughs> anyway, I'm adjusting. Yeah, you better be. <laughs> because 20 million naira is, uh, I guess, worth waiting for. Talking about waiting. Come on. You look extraordinarily sumptuous. What are you up to? Well, a date with Chris and Mr. Daniels. You what? Well, uh, he asked me for lunch or to have lunch with him when I went to take his statistics at the office today for his, um, you know, his um, outfit and. Um, but come on, we do that all the time, don't we, sir? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Except I've never seen you dressed like this. Unless you are, you are, you are going for a night out with Mark. Uh, oh, well. Sandra. Sit down. Sandra, sit. Sit, 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 sit. Uh, okay. Look, we are under contract to make this marriage stick. Not to ruin it. You know, what exactly do you mean by that, Robert? Because, you know... Be careful. Sandra, be very, very careful. Okay. <laughs> I'll remember that. Yeah, talk about a guy that has no regards for time. Are you sure he didn't mean Tina when he said lunch? <laughs> In this case, Robert, we're talking about 20 million naira. 20 so, big ones. I don't mind doing the waiting. Yeah, right, baby. Baby. I got your back. I got your All back, right. baby. Hey, big box, mega box, man. Mega box.
Hey, hi. Sorry, kept you waiting for once. <clears throat> well, I just felt, you know, keeping it a, a beautiful lady like yourself waiting a respectable restaurant like this is very ungentlemanly. <laughs> so I decided to come for you. Thank you. Anything to eat? No, I'm fine, but you can go ahead. No, I, I don't eat lunch. Doctor's orders. Mm, same here. I eat light when I'm on business. Oh, you call this a business date? Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> you care for some champagne? Please. Good. You look very edible yourself. <laughs> Now when it comes so pretty, glamorous, assumptions like this. It's gonna break your doctor's heart. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, what is this meeting about? Why I brought you here is that I want you to know that the feelings still persist. You know, I have this very strong feeling that I've met you somewhere before, but I can't seem to place a finger on it. Chris, I have seen you on one or two occasions, and those were definitely on the soft cell magazine. You definitely are mixing me up with something. I'll tell you something. My father told me lots of things before he died. Amongst them was the was the ability to master your inner being. I'll tell you one thing, Sandra. My instincts never go wrong. Neither are mine. Certainly I haven't met you somewhere. Trust me. Thank you. <laughs> You're a very strong woman and I like that. So, <clears throat> what else do you do besides um, organizing weddings for high society people? Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of other things, you know, like um, imports and exports. Sometimes we bring in um, accessories, you know, decorations, all that. We also um, organize conventions, you know, anything nice and classy, really. What do you think of my wife? Excuse me. Are you of the school of thoughts that um, once a rich man's son is matched with a rich man's daughter is a perfect blend? Could you put some wine, Start busting into my office like that. Since you started operating this place like a KU class club. What are you, what are you talking about? Sandra. Sandra. Yes. Why is it that she gets all the fat meals while I feed on crumbs? Tonya, why don't you say what you have to say? If at all you have anything to say. Whenever any color is big or loaded, you shift the contract to your bed, Sandra. Pet? Of course she is, and you can't deny it. Tonya, what, what are you insinuating? I've checked on Mrs. Vera Daniels. She owns half of Lagos State. And if my informers are right, she would dole out about 20 million for her only son's wedding and think nothing about it. Well, that would be to the glory of our wonderful company. Nightingale class services. Of course, to the evident comfortability of the agent who picks the 10% commission. Oh, <laughs> is that what your interest is? What else could interest me here besides the amount of money that gets into my account? Manager, Sandra has had four big ones in a trot. First, she landed the Mac Anthony's birthday party. Second, the PMPA convention stuff. And now, Mrs. Daniel is on the cards. For Christ's sake, is she the only one that knows how to flash her legs around? Tonya, you are missing the point. Manager, sir, I want this one.
For heaven's sakes, I have been waiting here all day. Oh, sorry, you know, the usual traffic. Traffic? Miss Richards, why do I have this feeling that we might have to postpone your wedding? Why? Why? Miss Richards, for heaven's sake, your clothes are London zone. But what that means is that I would need to take your measurements, send them over to London, and get this clothes here back in good time. Now, me and my crew have been trying to track you down for the past two weeks for just your measurements. You and your retinue or bridesmaids. Bridesmaids? I have just one bridesmaid, and that's Eve. Excuse me, I mean, the governor's daughter had like 21 bridesmaids, and your mother in law says we should double that number. To that's hell with my mother in law. This is my wedding and not hers. I don't know, have you sorted this out with her? I mean, is this... There's is nothing to sort out, Miss Sandra, okay? I said Eve, and that means only Eve. All right, can we get this um, over and done with? Fine. Get in the mix. made an allegation in a complaint really about Sandra. About what, madam? That you sent Sandra to the big shots even when the clients come in themselves. That's not true, madam. I am the general and clients manager of this company. And I know my best hands. Sandra is undebatedly our best. When I sent her out to clients, she comes back with a check. Tonya? But Ma, have I not been delivering? That's not what I will start telling you here in front of our executive director. Ma, you see, when the job comes in sophisticated, Sandra is always the best. But what of when they come in themselves, the clients? But, uh, I have lost a lot of bets because of inadequate follow-ups. Besides, this Mrs. Vera Daniels specifically requested for Sandra. How could she? Has she met Sandra before? Of course. Of course. She met her at the governor's daughter's wedding. Is that a fact? Ma, I, I wouldn't know. Madam, I think I, I should have a card here. That's it. That's it. Just why don't you just call her, you know, and confirm for yourself? No, let's just call her. Well, Miss Tony, I have no reason to doubt Robert's loyalty or ability. He is diligent enough. Go and win your clients and take your beat as they come. Okay? Sorry, ma'am. You better apologize to Mr. Roberts. Sorry, sir. You're welcome. I'm supposed to take care of my engagement ceremony. And my dad is not around. Do you think I should contract it out to Sandra as well? If you think he'll approve of that, yeah. He doesn't have any choice. When are we going to South Africa? My wedding just around the corner. And my dad flying in any day. I don't think I can make this trip with you. Damn it, Anne. Damn! What am I going to do there without you? Okay. Why don't we go after the wedding? I can't wait that long. Maybe you'll have to go without me just this once. Are you out of your mind? I'm not out of my mind, and you know it. You know what? You can be so inconsiderate at times, Anne. If why can't you understand? Why can't you understand the fact that my wedding is fast approaching and I wouldn't want to incur my father's wrath? Chris wouldn't even let me go. You know what? If you're not going with me to South Africa, get yourself another chief bride. If let's not do things, both of us will regret. Allow me to worry about it. 
Sorry, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you would react like that. And what do you want? <laughs> well, is this um, Miss O'Kay's residence? What if it is? Well, that will mean I'll have to see her, isn't it? And do you have a name? Of course, I certainly do. Um, Chrissy, who's that? He hasn't told me yet. Do you mind to tell me now? Yeah, I would if you were in. So proud. Jesus Christ! What are you doing here? I obviously came to see you. Isn't it obvious? Why would you come to see me anyway? Who's that girl? Who? Christy? Yeah? But that's my niece, why? Ah, your niece. That's a character to be worried about. Well, that's when you step out of line, and you certainly did by coming to my house at this time of the day. It's just nine o'clock, Sandra. Nine o'clock, Mr. Daniels, for heaven's sakes. With weeks to your wedding, you're not supposed to be in my place, be seen in my place by this time of the day. You're not even supposed to be seen in my place at all, you know? All right, all right, I'm sorry, okay? It's just that that same feeling still persists, you know? That feeling like I've seen you somewhere before. You sound like someone with a filthy past. In fact, like someone with a conscience. Guilty conscience, do you? No. Are you sure? Absolutely. <laughs> have you jilted a woman before, Mr. Daniels? No. Well, you certainly have even like one. And who the act seems to be um, hunting like some weeks to his wedding? I have done nothing of such. Honestly. Then go home to your wife. I mean, God has given you a perfect partner. Why don't you just go home, rejoice, and celebrate? You believe that? Well, I shouldn't. Then you'll believe anything. I'll just be on my way. You know what? Watch out for that niece of yours. I think she's too glee for her age. I thought you'd forgotten. We can't let anything come between us. The marriage is just around the corner, and I have to play the good girl. So? If I mess this marriage up, my father will disown me, and you know what that means. Have you thought about me? I think about you all the time. No, really think about it. You're the one getting married, right? What are you dwelling at? Right? Since I'm the one that's going to get tossed aside, why don't you show me a little consideration? You know if I'm back on this trip to South Africa without you, I'll be lost. You know that. So show me a little consideration. That's all I'm asking. 
Is it too much to sacrifice for a friend? Hmm? pretty open to each other. Certainly. Now tell me, was that really just an ordinary lunch date? <laughs> yes, it was. Okay. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Having said that, anyway, um, the only thing we've been right now is um, we're talking about the coffee now and then the balance and all that. You know, I don't, yeah, I don't no know, problem. Because I was I was looking up to Haiti, but I don't know where exactly you want me to come from. I got your back anytime. Chris, Mom. don't you agree that uh, Anne's relationship with Eve has take, totally taken a different turn? Yeah, Mom. I really don't understand it myself. It beats me. Anne says Eve is a best friend and she can do anything without her. And I thought, okay, since she'll be leaving her for my complete companionship, I decided to oblige her. Okay. All right. Mom. Yes. Can I ask you a question? What is it, dear? How did you meet my dad? Your father? Yeah. Uh, it was at the wedding of uh, First Republic Premier's daughter. He was the best man and I was the chief bridesmaid. Just like that? Yes. Just like that. Two years later, we took our vows in front of a priest. Mm. Now, let me ask you this, Mom. Mm. Do you believe that a successful marriage is when a rich man's son marries a rich man's daughter? What are you driving at? You don't believe that a rich man can fall in love with a wretched girl from a poor home and poor background or vice versa? That is for the books and movies. In reality, birds of a feather flock together. You, you attain a certain level in life and you, you maintain it. If you look down, you could get delayed or, or it, it can bring you down. Uh, for better, for worse, it's for the priest's archive. Love demands that you offer, but you must never put yourself in a position where you do all the offering. You know something, Mom? Yes. Emotion is for everybody. 
it holds no monetary boundaries. And I strongly believe the poorer you are, the stronger your emotion. <laughs> if you believe that, you'll believe anything. as irresistible as Chris Daniel is. I've asked him to wait and he's doing just that. Hmm? I'm supposed to believe that, right? Yes, you're supposed to believe it. Eve, I am not going to lose my morals just because the guy is desperate. You really want me to believe you? Yes. Then go and go to South Africa. The only way I'll know for sure that you're not sleeping with him behind me. Richard, Richard. I'm good, I'm good. So how's it coming? Well, not bad. I've been wanting to ask you, I've seen if you of your glamour entertainer these days. So, Sandra? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's busy. Pretty busy. Uh, Chris. Yeah? Can you be generous enough to give me a phone number? Sandra's phone number? Yeah. What for? <laughs> what sort of a question is that? Why would a prospective bachelor be needing the prospective spinster's phone number. You lay off her, Richard. Why? Why? You remember when you met Eve with my wife? You were all over her. Why the sudden change of loyalty? Forget about that. <laughs> Talking about uh, Eve, I've been wanting to ask you. Haven't you noticed anything odd about that lady? Something odd? Yeah. <laughs> Richard. Any woman I don't follow you to your bed is definitely odd. <laughs> Chris is not that. Okay, it's what then? Oh wait, you think it's not so transparent? So apparent? Huh? The way you gloat lustfully after her. Duh. Why not transparent? Oh, you're beyond transparent, my friend. Beyond transparent. Lay your filthy paws off Sandra. Why? I wouldn't say it again. And I mean it, I'm not playing with you. Lay your hands off her. Don't tell me. It's nothing. Oh. 
Mom, you see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? Oh, what is it again? It's a way to my engagement, and my so-called wife to be is nowhere to be found. She's somewhere in South Africa gallivanting all by herself. That's what comes out of so-called high-class women. Oh. That's what I mean when I'm talking about rich mother. Oh, shut up. This is not a matter of shutting up, Mom. This is a matter of reconsideration. Because no woman from any poor background would do what Anne is doing right now. You dare not walk out of Chris! Chris! Useless woman called E. Huh? Yes, with her, but she, she's a respectable young woman. <laughs> Again, I was keen you alive. Daddy, she's my chief bridesmaid. Then get another one. But her dress has been sewn already. We will make new dresses. You've got to be kidding, Chief Dan. Get out of this place, and stay out. Because you won't get another chance for a warning. Never. Please. You keep saying that. 
I mean it this time.
<laughs> so how's it going? I, I can see that the news of your wedding is on every tabloid in town. That's what worries me, Richard. What? Please, you should be elated. Your mother is wielding her soul everywhere. You know, I have this feeling my mother is no more behind this. Oh, your father-in-law. Your father-in-law is more than capable. So, my friend, you should be celebrating. Very few guys in this town corner such privileges. Richard, I believe that someone is making damn sure I do not work out of this marriage. Work out? Chris, what the hell are you talking about? I mean, as in, work out, work out of the marriage. Exactly. Chris, don't tell me that you're contemplating walking out of heaven. Richard, do you know the truth? Heaven may not be such a wonderful paradise that most of us wrongly picture it to be. Chris, how else will heaven be? If not exactly as Marin and Richards. Richards! You need some catching up, man. Enlighten me, please. Okay, picture this now. It's three days to my engagement. And my wife just returned from a two weeks jamboree. And 36 hours thereafter, she has not even contacted me. Chris, that does not mean a damn thing. Wake up, jet age. To you, it doesn't mean a thing, but to me, it's heaven on earth. Chris, let me talk to you like a friend. You see, I'm, I'm your friend. I'm your friend, I'll tell you the truth. You see, I want you to read your mind of all this corrupt, obscene imagination. God has given you a wife. Clear your mind, clear your eyes, enjoy her. Any reasonable man would. Do you really believe God gives men wives? Certainly. I do not think so. Why, if I may ask? <laughs> well, you know when God gave man a wife, when he actually gave man a wife, the man ended up blaming God so much and so bitterly over it. You know? I'm talking about the Adam and Eve story here, okay? Thereafter, God said unto man, Go ye out there and find thyself thy wife. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Quiz. <laughs> See, let me tell you the fact. If that is how you want it, then you found yourself a great wife. I did not find my wife, Richards. My mother did. to see your pictures on the front pages of every tabloid in this town spreading the news of your last night's horror. You wouldn't do that, Dad. <laughs> Are you willing to bet on that? Daddy, please. All I need to do is call a press conference. That's right. Now, I mean, I, I, I could buy it. Every newspaper in this town, if someone else was telling the story, but when I'm doing the talking, then it is breaking news. Okay? That way the press will know why I am disowning you. You wouldn't do that to your only daughter, would you? Oh, yeah? But my only daughter could spit on her only father's face, right? Huh? Did you ever think of a humiliation awaiting me and my political ambition if this were the first flat this moment? Did you? I've been thinking about it since last night. And I've decided to call it quits with Eve. <laughs> Are we truly certain about that? Are we? that amongst other dignitaries, 25 senators are coming for your wedding. Yes, Dad. 
Now, are you, are you willing to face your wedding and live a normal life just like the good girl that I know that you are? All right. We'll give it another chance, but I tell you, if you mess up, I'm going to do all sorts of things, including cutting you off my wheel. And I made it. Daddy, can I ask for just one last wish? What is it? Let Eve still be my chief bridesmaid. I promise I won't see her again after that. My son, Chris. No one tells me what to do. However, we seem to be on the same side of this one. Very good. Yeah, okay. Now let me open up to you. I actually called you out here so that we can plan for details, so that nothing goes wrong. All right. I've ordered two drinks and we are going to have. Thank you. 
Daddy, can you imagine this? What? Can you just imagine this? Take a look at this. What? What does this little brat think he is? I told you, Daddy. I told you. Anyway, I don't really care. All I care about is that the wedding takes place. No, come on. You must care. I mean, your husband to be is messing around town. You have to check him. You have to hold on to what is yours. Don't talk like that. Come on. Thank you, love. Now what is your game, little boy? I beg your pardon, sir. You flaunt your mistress on the pages of newspapers for the eight hours to your engagement day. It was just a lunch thing. Besides. That lady is entitled to it. Indeed. If you must know, sir, this lady has been working herself out, working really hard to ensure the success of your daughter's wedding. And your daughter is somewhere in South Africa, lazying around. That lady was paid to do her job. Find out her fees. Now let me tell you, boy, if you play pranks with me, you will forever live to regret it. Coming from a whole be father-in-law, that's quite an encouraging news, I must say. Listen, boy. I mean it. I mean it. Confide in me. How can I trust you? This, this, there's nothing really. It's not. It's not like um, you know. I, I really don't know what, what this whole thing is about. It's not like. I was then, not now. Did you hear the news? Exactly why I called. Go. Do you think that your son by any chance is playing pranks? Why would he do that? <laughs> you never know. Look, I want this to happen just as much as you do. And I also believe that it was a harmless lunch date. I understand that you want it to happen, okay? But I was thinking that uh, you're also cultivating the habit of uh, changing your mind. I do not. That's good news for a change. I just want to remind you again that uh, amongst other dignitaries that are invited, 25 senators are coming for this wedding. I know that. And I've invited the who's who, anybody who is anybody in this state. Let us meet on the engagement day, okay? Why were you crying in school? I had three bibles. 
and I misplaced one. You were cry because you misplaced your Bible? Then I was in Plum Tree. Oh, I see. Matthew is cool, then told me to stop crying over bacterial things. She also advised me that I had two bios instead of, and some of my mates had none. Yeah, that's very true. And um, your auntie was very correct. In fact, that's a very good thing to adapt to. Yeah. But auntie, I saw you crying last night. You saw me crying last night? Oh well, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, we adults cry too, you know, yeah. Why must you cry instead of rejoicing? You have a beautiful car, a big house, a good job. Kristen dear, you're a very observant girl. Thank you. Alright, but you see, most of the times when we cry, it's not only because of material things. Sometimes we cry because of memories, you know? What memories are they? Mm, memories of, um, of the past. Sometimes of bad things that have happened to us, you know? Bad things? Yeah. Like me now. No, I don't know my daddy. So, can you please tell me who my father is? Christy, um, please can we um, talk about this later? No. Auntie, who is my father? What happened to him? Where is he? Mom, Chief Richard was at my office today. He was? Yeah, he came to threaten me over the wedding. Why would he do that? I don't know, maybe you can tell me. Well, I really don't think, you know, exhibiting yourself and Sandra on the pages of the newspapers was a very good idea. Mom, that was just an ordinary lunch date and you know it. Coming hours before the engagement, it's pretty suggestive. Mom, let me ask you something. Is this marriage a do or die affair? No, certainly not. Great. It really don't matter, even if I pull out an R to it. <laughs> you will do no such thing. Think of the scandal. I don't care, Mom. Please, Chris. Don't kill me. Kill you? Mom, let me know this. Is there more to this than meets the eye? Oh, no, but... Of our social status, our list of invitees. Oh, Chris, I mean, it would be a laughing stock. Mom, we're talking of a wife here, not a car purchase. Oh, sweetheart, in the early stages, the significance of both of them is the same. I don't believe you're talking like this. Where is my supposed wife? No, Anne. Ah. She'll toe the line. Oh, yeah? Without a good for nothing Eve of a friend always writing that script? Yes. Please. If I ever do this, Mom, it will be solely because of you. Jesus Christ! 
That girl is something else. Something else? That is an understatement. That girl has grown into an impossible adult just within 11 years. And did you tell her? Tell her? <laughs> Ego, please. Why don't you tell her yourself? Sandra. Me. Tell her. Ah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not after all these years. Please, save me the agony, please. Okay. Anyway, a letter came from the school yesterday. Mm, what was it about? She was awarded the prize as the best computer student. Wow, that's <laughs> nice. Ah, I see, now I know. No wonder she's so hooked on that computer thing of hers. <laughs> My God, give it to her. She's just brilliant. I agree. But then, but she happy. I mean, <laughs> inspire her brilliance or whatever of me. <laughs> Look, every day I spend so much money buying one, one particular computer game or the other for that girl. I think you should go and carry her. Ah. As long as my money is expired, I'm telling you, I'm going to dump her here very soon. Let's go inside before another hungry press man catches us out here. No, I'm sorry, I don't think that is necessary. Sandra, don't be a fool. The game is up, okay? Let's start acting like intelligent people that I believe we both are. Please. You're gonna open my own door for me? Yes, I will. Sir? You know. For a moment, when I saw you that day in our house with my mother, I almost believed that I'd seen you somewhere before. How long is it going to take me to convince you that I haven't seen you before? How long? But now, I've come to realize that it's more like it's chemistry that has been playing tricks on my mind. Mr. Daniels, please tell me that you're not saying exactly what I think you're saying. Sandra, why didn't you come into my life earlier? Mr. Daniels, please! Sandra, please cut out this Mr. Daniels stuff. To you, I am Chris. Mr. Daniels, it is about 24 hours to your engagement. So, why don't you just play the nice guy First, I have not made any vows. Second, I said to you, I am Chris. Hey, Auntie! Um, <coughs> I am. Um... Oh, that's alright. My auntie in school told me all this happened now and then. I'm so sorry for that. Pretty eyes. Excuse me. Sorry about that. I think you should leave my house. Yeah. Yes, um, but... Leave my house. No.
doesn't love his wife to be. I'm not really your auntie. You are not? No. Then, then who are you? I'm your mom. What the? That's not true. It's true. Enough for you to nibble on when you're playing with your computer. All this for me? Everything. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're always welcome, okay? Okay. And whatever is always for? Well, it's for our exploits in school. She ought to be encouraged. Shouldn't you be encouraged, my dear? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, dear. I'll see you later. Okay. Very brilliant girl, I tell you. I'll just um, help myself to the door.
sorry about that. I'm sure you can do something, but it's not totally my fault. You don't come for your measurements. Mm. Alright, I'm sure we can do something about that. Mm -hmm. um, not that now, um, just like an inch around, you know, just back there. Okay. Just go on uh, Sabine and Indy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But everything is okay, you know. So it is, um, I mean, you girls look rubbish. Even the Duke of Edinburgh will be like impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are truly impressed with uh. ah! Well, I, I have my eyes closed. Out. You know what? Let's just go in for your own, you know. Just bring her stuff. Oh my god. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, let's go. 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 Let's go.
What is it? What's the matter? What's wrong with you? Sana, what is the matter with you? What, what is it? What is it? Well, I'm getting out of this house. What? Why? Sandra! Sandra! Right now, my mother is in the hospital. I can't seem to find Anne anywhere. I demand an explanation, Sandra. I'm sorry, I can't. Well, then I call off the whole damn wedding. It's your wedding. And you broke it. I did it? Then talk. Look, Chris, I'm sorry I can't. Because if I do, then I will be truly responsible. And if you don't, I will still break it up, so? Chris, please. Please. Did you feel anything for me? Look, I do, but... Then please, talk to me, tell me. What happened? that landed me with a psycho of a daughter and had a guts to threaten me. Let's keep all that now, okay? Now, I have guests out there, both in my house and at the arena. And I uh, have no intention of disappointing them. Ah, meaning? Meaning that uh, we all go out there and continue this little show as if nothing ever happened. Please. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, sir, but you must be out of your mind. Boy, Chief Richards is nothing to those habits. Okay? Come on. Lift up the legs. Let's go. Listen, let me tell you, I'm a very desperate man, and I would not allow years of scheming to go down the drain just like that. All at my expense, right? You don't understand this game of politics. You know, everyone is watching one step out of town. And you're nailed for good. Please, my boy, do not let my opponents get this opportunity. You know something, Chief Richards? I was in Tottenham Trent University when my mother was going on and on and on and never ending about your daughter. And when I came back home to please my mother, I decided to go on with the arrangement. What? You mean it wasn't as if... Exactly. You see, I'm not the kind of person who believes in marriage of convenience. I don't believe that um, as a rich man, I ought to marry from the rich man's stable. You see, I believe the yardstick should be love, not clout. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. My guests are out there, and many more are on their way. You understand what I'm saying? Let me ask you something, Chief Richards. Yes. If you were me, would you go on with the marriage? You know something, sir? I'm willing to keep my mouth shut. If only you keep your psycho daughter away from my tracks. Now. Chris Daniel. Definitely. Obviously. Unequivocally without a doubt. Deserves a better wife than a lesbian. Now don't you think so? What? What? What, what am I going to tell my guests? Huh? Senators! Honorable man, just tell them the soup has just turned sour. My second. But I should suppose you understand this thing from my point of view. Your point of view is very selfish, inconsiderate, and insensitive. Let you go. 
Let her deal with that for now. That's the best I can do for now. The earlier you tell her the truth, the better for you. Maybe later, sometime later in life, I'll tell her the truth, or maybe I might not even tell her at all. It depends, really. For now, I think it's just okay. So you can shoo shoo and go? Chris, I want you to know that I really like you. Hello, ding dong. Sorry? I really like you. And I thought somewhere along the line, I'm losing up and falling off with you. Mm. But each day passed on with that hope dwindling. So why did you pick me? My father. My father always my father. Ah. Always him, right? He wanted a talk of the town wedding with state of the car at cars. To flag off his campaign. So why did your father pick me then? Is that so? Then why did you play along? He would have disowned me. And now? My father would have disowned me if he had found out about me and I. And now? Well, he had no choice when he found out it was all his fault. His fault? How? Right from birth, Chris. My father was very strict with me. He never let me be the opposite sex. He always left strict instructions with my teachers. The driver was always there to pick me up from school and drop me off at home. Then came secondary school. Of course, an all girls secondary school.
she was the only one that thought I loved me to get close to. So, we became friends. We became very close. We used to do things together. We used to go on holidays together. Have our baths together. We even sleep together. so horrible. Maybe. We don't know the kind of... We don't know the kind of pleasure we derive just being with each other. I mean, even I. We need to see us together. I love us so much. And I know she loves me as well. We're so happy being together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really don't want to know that about you myself. You both are sick. It's a matter of opinion. Let me advise you. If you ever have a daughter, please let her need the opposite sex. Oh, I definitely will. With all this that has happened. Yeah. Back off, please. Okay. Um, 
I swear to God, if you come another inch closer, I will cripple you. And I'm not playing. Back off. I said... Oh, somehow. How very nice of you to drop by. Anne was just about leaving. look oh come on you know she's not the type for men she was just telling me about her escapade with you Sandra Sandra she was telling me about her escapade with Eve Sandra I know this is not a proper place to ask Okay, but it's the will that matters, not where. Ask what? Sandra? Will you marry me? Enough to wish you were my wedded wife. You don't know my love. Why don't you wait till you know my love? It's too premature. I've known you for like two months now. What's left to know? I'm very observant, you know. <laughs> You're very observant. Yet, you went out with an almost married lesbian. For almost one year. And you're observing? Sandra, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, will you marry me? There's some things we still need to talk about. Let's go ahead, let's talk about it. I need a mother's present. My mother? Yes. Your mother. Yeah, into something. Well, maybe, Mom. Me. I'm a woman. I know the signs. Who is she? Well, I believe you already know. Oh. Is she Commissioner today's daughter? What? Oh. Ah, uh, Senator Wakwe's daughter. Still corner the daughter of the uh, Minister of Education. Oh, come on, Mom. There you go again. Just the way you shoved that right into my path. And was bad news. Never to be repeated. You know something, Mom? You had your chance and you bungled it. Why don't you just... Let me choose a wife for myself. Please, I beg of you. At least I'm the one who's going to leave with her. All right, but be quick about it. You're not getting any younger. Well, I already have. Sandra. It's not that I despise Sandra, really. 
It's just that I was hoping for someone from a higher social strata. There's someone more important. You know, Mom, Sandra is very important. She's important enough. Besides, I really do not want your social stuff any longer. Well, I know she will not make a bad wife. If she's really the person you want, go ahead. She wants you to come along with me. What? I already asked her and that's her condition. She must be out of her mind. No, she's not, Mom. She's a woman and she's got her dignity. Well, Sandra, fate can be truly amazing. I contracted you to events manage my son's wedding. Now, you are to become the bride. When he told me what his intentions were, I said, why not? We do our bit and God does the best. Thank you very much, Ma, for your confidence in me to be a good wife for your son. I equally love Chris and um, I wholeheartedly wish he would be my husband. But there is something the both of you must know. Yeah, what's that? I am not going to marry you without my daughter. What? Yes. I have a child. Jesus Christ. Right. Mom, if she were your daughter, would you support her in aborting at the age of 16? This is a girl that kept her child at that age. When in these times in this country, every street has one abortion house or the other, that means she has the fear of God. That means there's some form or some element of respectability in her. Yes, but... Mom, what does it matter if I end up marrying this girl and her daughter and I live happily thereafter? You're a with thousands of women queuing up to marry you. All you have to do is ask. Thousands of girls, Mom, like Anne. Anne was bad news, and so is Sandra. Look, I will not allow you to marry two women into this house. Sandra and her daughter. The daughter we're talking about here, the girl in question, her name is Christy, and she's one in a million. Were it possible, I would have adopted her as my daughter. This girl just won a prize in computing. She's so brilliant. She stops of every subject in the class. She might have everything, but she is not your daughter. Like I said, I will greatly be honored to be her stepfather. 
What if the real father steps in? Let me worry about that, Mom. I am sorry. I will not allow this to happen. Do tell me your mother's strings to carry is ever. It still does, Freddy. It still does. <laughs> That's serious. Look, Chris, you don't have to carry this load if it's too heavy for you. Marriage, it's a marathon race. Look, your mother doesn't have to decide. I mean, you know me, don't you? Sure, my brother. So, it's that knowledge that runs through my mind all the time. You know very well that my parents forced me into that minister's daughter. But what happened? Eight months, just eight months after that talk of the town wedding, we'll break it up. Today, I am happy. Very, very happy with the, with the lady I picked from nowhere. But at least I'm happy. You know, that's the point. That's just the main point. See, I'm scared. I'm really afraid that if I follow my mother's belief, I'll be heading for disaster. Although, with due respect to her, she shouldn't make decisions for you. You're a man. Learn from my own mistakes. I'm your friend. Learn from my mistakes. Pali, you, you won't wear those shoes, oh. You won't. I mean, you don't step into those shoes. Those shoes, they carry thorns in them. You won't. Honestly, that's my, that's my friendly advice to you, please. You really have to think about it. This is such a surprise, you know. Look at you, man. You look good enough to eat. <laughs> As usual. Yeah, straight away. I mean, I just came to town and decided to come and see you. Just like that. <laughs> hey, come on. You really think I'll come into this town without having to come to see you first? Come on. I'm Sandra. Um, I'm here for... Set you down, and I have this belief that I already have a ready wife. Yeah, Charles, I'm so sorry, but you're too late. Late, yeah, how Charles? Someone already proposed to me yesterday, just yesterday, and I've waited for this all my life. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Are you trying to tell me that you 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 said yes? What's a girl to do? So what you're trying to say right now is that you guys are about to get married or what? Well, Charles, the only thing still holding us back right now is that he's trying to make up his mind about Christy. Who is Christy? Yes, Christy. Charles. Christy. Is my daughter. What?
Just a friend. Friend? Well, if you may ask me, I prefer Uncle Chris. I haven't asked you, Christy. Okay. But my dad prefers all the same. Christy, your preference for what? For my father. You said my father is dead. Then, then get me stepfather. You don't know how I feel without him. Chris is very kind. And a gentleman too. A gentleman? How would you know that, Christy? Huh? My auntie in school told me that only gentlemen wear Rolex watches. <laughs> Uncle Chris wears a Rolex watch? Yes. Besides, since his name is Uncle Chris, and my name is Christy. Don't you see our names sound alike? She'll have no choice this time around. There's yet something else I must tell you. And this time, I think it's going to be more shocking. Sandra, you've been letting too many jacks out of the box lately. What is it this time? 
You're pregnant yet for another man? No. Chris. It's more like a question actually. So what is it? I've been having some disturbing dreams of late. Very disturbing dreams. Dreams? Yeah. Now, before you start calling me James, I know something. I know myself, you, you know? It's like, if I don't deal with this right now, it's gonna haunt me for the rest of my life. Okay, so what is it? Okay. I've been dreaming about this particular girl. Every time I try to come close to you in my dream, she keeps tormenting me. Chris, have you ever disappointed a girl before? Why should we talk about this now? Because I want to know, Chris. I need to know. Look, Chris, if I'm going to be your wife, then I must be able to trust you. You should be able to tell me everything. Look, Chris, if you tell me about this girl, if there is one, I'm ready to forget about these dreams forever. Said a girl before. It's true, it's actually happened before. I need you to talk about it now. I never wanted to talk about this. Even now? Well, I can't deny you the knowledge if you insist. I insist, Chris. Tell me. There is this girl. I remember her very vividly. Naive, perhaps. Very honest. I met her in my aunt's place in Enugu. We were actually living in the same neighborhood. But I actually never met her until that day. That fateful day. I think her innocence and genuine naivety attracted me. Besides that fact, she was very attractive. And she was only 16. So what happened? I don't know. It was like a magnetic pull. Like I said, she was 16 in SS3, and I was 20. Oh 
Is that her name? What's her name? Well? Yes. She died. Died? What happened? Honestly, I, I do know some real angels like you existed around here, you know. Usually, when there is a white guy, mm. one tends to keep her distance. What girl? The gap between the rich and the poor. I do belong in your class, do I? Right? Cow, stop that quality nonsense. You call it nonsense? Of course, it's nonsense. All right, I'll prove it to you. You don't even know who I am, do you? Are you a Christian? All right, Christian who? Christianos. Okay, I give it up, I give up. But I tell you one thing, there is no gap between us, okay? Of course there is, and you know it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, even if there is, I intend to bridge it. Bridge it? Yeah, bridge it. Oh. What's your name? My name is Amaka. Amaka Utenshuku. And I'm only a maid here. Oh, stop that. Stop that. Stop. Mm, you see, before.
came back for the mid-semester break one day when my auntie came in with Amaka. One look at them and I knew it. I thought I told you never to step into this house. And how dare you come in here with that wretched thing? Mom. Mom, please. Sister Vera. Sister, there is a problem. Amaka is pregnant. What? Yes. Sister, I never knew her relationship with Chris went beyond the ordinary. I never knew. This girl is my maid and I trusted her. Chris saw her in my house. And I have to perform the duties of a responsible woman. What duties? Bringing this rather unfortunate development to your notice. <laughs> if you don't get out of here, you will regret ever having me as a sister. But, sister... Sister, it's not like that. Please, get out! How dare you! This thing that sleeps with drivers and gatemen and then wants to force her irresponsible act on my son? And you call yourself my sister? Um, um, please. I'm responsible for it and I know you Sister, please. Oh, you are still waiting! I tried everything, but I never saw Amaka again. When I made serious moves through my auntie, I heard she died of a strange illness. Strange illness? Yes. They said she wasn't really pregnant. But she was only trying to trap me. But I know Amaka. Amaka wouldn't descend that low. I tried to locate her parents. But my only link, Auntie Nika, died of a terrible motor accident. Isn't that strange? Quite strange. I would have still gone ahead to try and locate her parents, but I had no clue. No clue? Yeah, more like... More like I had no chance. Because almost immediately my mother sent me abroad to go continue my studies. And ever since then, I've never forgotten about Amaka. She was always in my heart. She still is in my heart. Even in death. Now you know the story. Baby, she's with a nurse. So, why are you crying? Sister, what else will I do? Sister, what else can I do besides tears? It's okay. How can it be okay? I've made complete mess of my life. Sister. Sister, look at me. My future, education, all gone in smokes. My mother, no short sign of helping me, is dead. Sister, what am I going to tell Mama? 
What will I tell her led me into this temptation? What? It's okay. <laughs> I've already discussed this with my husband. He said you should pack into our house. He has already agreed to take care of your education till you get to the university level. He has paid the hospital bill. You're my sister. He felt so bad that all this happened because you were not living with us. You're packing to live with us now. Hmm? You mean Christy is my daughter? Yes. Christy is your daughter. Oh my God. My mother will be shocked like hell. So, so you knew my identity all along? of explanations to make, but yes, I am your father. Oh, 
Sampai